Hello dear students, hope you all are doing well. In this video, we are going to discuss Chapter 3, Deep Water by William Douglas from your textbook in English class 12th, Flamingo. Dear students, Deep Water is an amazing story of William Douglas. This story teaches us how to stand firm against all odds of life and also how to overcome them. So I request all of you to please watch this complete video and uh, make notes also if it is possible for you. So let's start with William Douglas. William Douglas was born in Maine, Minnesota. After graduating with Bachelors of Arts in English and Economics, he went to teach in a high school and he spent two years in that and when he got tired in that teaching so he decided to pursue his legal career so and after that he met president the US president Roosevelt he became a friend and advisor to president D Roosevelt William Douglas was a famous advocate. He was a leading advocate of individual rights. This story, Deep Water, is an excerpt that has been taken from Of Men and Mountains, written by William Douglas. It's an autobiographical account in which he says that how he was almost drowned in a swimming pool and then later how he overcame his fear of water. The story starts with a line, it had happened when I was 10 or 11 years old. What is this it? Actually it refers to the misadventure that took place in his life, the life of William Douglas when he was 10 or 11 years old. And then after this line, the chapter speaks about his desire, William Douglas's desire to learn to swim. Though he was afraid of water, still he had desire in his heart to learn to swim. And for that he wanted to find a safe place. So finally he found one uh, and that safe place was uh, YMCA pool. What is the full form of YMCA? Young Men's Christian Association. And uh, the place where he was living, there was uh, a river, treacherous river, Yakima River. And his mother would often tell him the stories of drownings that took place in that river. So this boy was already afraid of water. And these stories, the stories of the mother, they were simply multiplying his fear of water. But still he was passionate. He wanted to learn to swim. So he goes to the YMCA pool to learn to swim. Now let's see something about swimming pools. So swimming pools, in any swimming pool, the one end is shallow deep and the other end is deeper. So one end is around two or three feet deep and the other side or the other end is around nine feet deep. And same is the measurement of that pool also. And uh, but the drop in this in this pool was or any pool is the drop is gradual. All of a sudden, suppose if a person enters into the part of you know that is deep two or three feet deep, uh, that person will will not all of a sudden you know, go into enter into that the deeper part. So it will take time. So the uh, the drop is gradual. And uh, when he goes to this pool, YMCA pool. He did not uh, feel so, so happy uh, because initially he felt dislike for the water and also he did not want to uh, put off his clothes in front of the other people and uh, already something happened in his life you know that developed a fear of water in his, in his life. So dislike of water in his life though he had dislike of water in his life still he wanted to learn to swim. So what happened in his life? that developed that this dislike for water, developed fear for water. When he was three, he says, Douglas says, 
this actually happened this uh, started when he was 3 or 4 years old when he was just 3 or 4 years old uh, once he went along with his father to a beach in california so both the father and the son they went to that beach and both of them they were standing in the surf and they were enjoying the, their time then all of a sudden a wave comes and knocks him down and for some time this child though he was uh, standing you know um, holding his father but because of that wave uh, this boy falls down and uh, he was under water for some time and when this boy went under water he was terribly afraid and he was looking to his father father was also not helping him father was laughing the child was confused why the why uh, my father was laughing you know why father was laughing it doesn't mean that his that father was a cruel father he was a loving father but why he was not helping his son because he knew that the situation was in his control the situation was not dangerous and he knew that uh, everything uh, was in the hands of the the father but that was the time when that fear of water developed in his heart so he arranged uh, new water wings and with the help of the water wings he started learning to swim and also uh, by aping the other people by imitating by copying the other people he started learning to swim but uh, he remained to the shallow deep part of the pool he did not go to the deeper part of the pool the 9 feet deep part of the pool because he was uh, not a swimmer at all and uh, one day what happened that he went to the pool little early and uh, when there was no one else in the pool he was the only person in the pool that time and since he was the he was alone in the in the pool and he was timid also he was shy to enter into the water without anyone else uh, he was hesitating and uh, so therefore he started to wait for the other people to come so he went and sat on the edge of the pool the side of the pool and you know which side he chose to sit the 9 feet deep part side he chose to sit so he went there and he sat on the edge of the pool the side of the pool and then you know what happened this this was the time when the misadventure started actually and uh, the second person who enters into the pool was a big bruiser of a boy a big uh, you know uh, a bodybuilder type of a boy he comes and his age was around 18 years and uh, uh, he was a beautiful specimen of uh, you know a bodybuilder he had uh, beautiful muscles beautiful rippling muscles his arms and his his legs you know they were showing beautiful rippling muscles and this boy when he comes uh, he uh, speaks to uh, he says to william douglas hey uh, skinny how would you like to be ducked means how would you like if i push you down into the water and william douglas couldn't understand what that boy was trying to say so without giving him any warning this strong boy pushed william douglas into the water and william douglas was not at all prepared for this situation he was not mentally prepared and also he was not physically prepared for this situation because he did not know how to swim and uh, when he this william douglas he was pushed into the water he was terribly afraid but still his mind was in his control and he was in uh, he was able to command his mind and he made a plan while he was going down he made a plan what was the plan uh, he made a plan that as as his feet touch the bottom of the pool he will take a big jump upwards to the towards uh, to the surface and he will come Uh, he thought that he will very easily he will come to the surface like a cork and he will very easily he'll be able to reach to the uh, edge of the pool that was his plan but as as soon uh, as as he went down and his he, feet touched the bottom of the pool and when he tried that it became impossible for him to overcome that situation because uh, he was not able, able to swim so he just started moving his feet he was he started moving his his arms his whole body but he he did, did not know uh, swimming so therefore the situation was completely out of control he tried and tried you know he was unable to uh, to uh, to breathe he was unable to um, 
suck air and when he wanted to suck air he swallowed water but anyhow he was able to come to the surface but uh, he was not completely out of water just his eyes and his nose uh, were out of water for some time and within no time once again he goes down and situation was now completely out of control but Uh, second time also as he was going down he remembered his strategy do you remember the strategy what was the what was the plan that as soon as his once again as soon as his feet touch the bottom he will take a big spring big jump upwards and he will come to the surface and he will move to the edge he thought that but this time second time became more difficult for him he was unable to breathe and uh, he was unable to move his hands his feet he wanted to move his feet but his feet became too heavy he was unable to move his feet his feet became paralyzed why because he was not he, he was not able to move his feet under water so he was expending his strength as one does in a nightmare he cried but uh, no one was uh, hearing him he cried for help he cried uh, uh, his uh, for for his mother but the mother was also unable to hear him because he was under water but anyhow second time also he was able to come to the surface and once again his nose and his eyes were out of water and but with no time once again he goes down the third time and but this time the situation was completely out of control and he crossed the oblivion and he became completely unconscious uh, and uh, you know earlier just a moment before he was so so panicked he was so afraid but now uh, now he is you know he is entering into a different kind of a world he became unconscious so therefore uh, the things were now now uh, cool for him Th- things became peaceful for him and you know here this part of the story is very important because in the first two attempts uh, he tried a lo- lot he struggled a lot but this time he is really experiencing a death like situation uh, he is actually experiencing the death let me read this part for you then all efforts ceased this is the third time now when he was going down then all efforts ceased i relaxed even my legs felt limp without stiffness and a blackness swept over my brain it wiped out fear it wiped out terror there was no more panic it was quiet and peaceful nothing to be afraid of this is ni- nice to be drowsy to go to sleep no need to jump too tired to jump It's nice to be carried gently to float along in space tender arms around me tender arms like mothers now i must go to sleep what kind of a sleep now he is preparing to go uh, a sleep that is for ever and then the book says that uh, i crossed to oblivion and the curtain of life fell and then then he says Uh, next uh, next he remembered that he was lying uh, on his stomach at the edge of the pool and the boy who who pushed him in he was saying that that he was just making fun uh, and uh, the and there was one more man one more person who was you know getting angry on this on this boy this bu- big bruiser of a boy he said that this boy nearly died and then after uh, and, and then after this this boy was taken to the locker room and he remained there for several hours and after several hours this boy you know um, on reaching his house house he was feeling so weak so wobbly in his uh, feet uh, in his knees and he was unable to stand he was so weak he was unable to sleep also that night and then uh, for uh, then after this incident for years this terror remained in his heart and he never returned to this pool and then after a few years the book says when i came to know the waters of the cascades cascades uh, is a waterfall uh, i want to get into them so once again after a few years 
he falls uh, in the, in the temptation and he was unable to resist that temptation because the passion was still there in his heart and he really wanted to learn to swim once again uh, uh, i wanted to get into them and whenever i did whether i was wading the tetan or bumping river or bathing in warm lake of the goat rocks the terror that had seized me in the pool would come back it would take possession of me completely my legs Uh, would become paralyzed i see horror would grab my heart so you know uh, he really wanted to do desire he had the desire in his heart the desire did not you know the uh, go leave him completely the desire remained in his heart he was just afraid of water but the passion was still alive in his uh, in his heart he says this handicap stayed with me as the years rolled by in uh, canoes on main lakes fishing for landlocked salmon bass uh, fishing in new hampshire trout fishing on the deschutes and uh, metolius in uh, oregon fishing for salmon on the uh, columbia at bumping uh, lake in the cascades wherever i went the haunting fear of water followed me it ruined my fishing trips deprived me of the joy of canoeing boating and swimming so he really wanted to enjoy all these water bodies all these places but because of his fear of water because of his phobia he was unable to enjoy and here he takes a very important decision what is the decision to get an instructor an instructor to teach him the skills of swimming so this part of the story is a very important part and here uh, the role of a teacher starts so let us read a few lines from the book i used every way i knew to overcome this fear but it held me firmly in its grip finally one october at so in the month of october he gets an instructor and the instructor remains with him till april so around 6 months so i decided to get an instructor and learn to swim i went to a pool and practiced 5 days a week an hour each day the instructor put a belt around me a rope attached to the belt went through a pulley that ran on the overhead cable he held on to the end of the rope and we went back and forth back and forth across the pool hour after hour day after day week after week on each trip across the pool a bit of the panic uh, seized me each time the instructor relaxed his hold on the rope and i went under some of the old terror returned and my legs froze it was 3 months before the tension began to slack so after 3 months when he hired when he get uh, gets this uh, in- instructor after 3 months he started you know coming out of his fear coming out of his terror then he taught me to put my face under water and exhale and to raise my nose and inhale i repeated the exercise hundreds of times bit by bit i shed part of the uh, panic that seized me when my head went under water next he held me at the side of the pool and had me uh, kick with my legs for weeks i did just that uh, at first my legs refused to work but they gradually relaxed and finally i could command them do you remember the time when he was under water when that mishap mishappening took place he, he you know his feet became too heavy paralyzed that he was feet was completely out of control but here at this point with the help of of the instructor he was able to command his feet where under the water thus piece by piece he built a swimmer who built a swimmer the instructor built a swimmer and when he had perfected each piece he put uh, them together uh, into an integrated whole in april he said now you can swim dive off and swim the length of the pool crawl stroke uh, and very important words of this instructor and this is something that you should you must note uh, the instructor says now you can swim so these are the words of a teacher when a teacher says to his student now you can do that now you are fit for for this particular work so these words are very powerful words and this these words really make wonders and after this it is written that the instructor was finished but i was not finished what does it what does it mean the instructor was finished 
it means that the role of the instructor was over and now who uh, whose role uh, was to start role of the student only and who is the student here william douglas so william douglas continued his uh, practices his trainings uh, but now a time comes in his life when he realizes that to remain in the boundaries within the boundaries of the pool was not enough and if you really wanted to check whether he became a successful a perfect swimmer or not for that he wa he was supposed to go to different places to different water bodies so uh, let us uh, read the last line of page number 28 so i went to lake wentworth in new hampshire dived off a dock at tricks island and swam 2 miles across the lake to uh, stamp act island i sw i swam the crawl uh, breast stroke a side stroke and back stroke only once did the terror return when i was in the middle of the lake i put my face under water uh, under and saw nothing but bottomless water the old sensation returned in miniature means in a small scale small amount i laughed and said to, to, to whom he is reacting here william douglas is reacting to his fear and uh, and and what way he is reacting he is speaking to the situation he is speaking to his terror so this is a powerful lesson that we must learn from his life speaking against uh, speaking to the situations uh, i laughed and said well mr terror what do you think you can do to me uh, it fled and i swam on so when he spoke to the situation when he spoke to his terror to his fear his fear ran away so uh, yet i had residual doubts at my first opportunity i i hurried west uh, went up the the tieton to conrad meadows up the conrad creek trail to midi glacier and camped in the high meadow by the side of a warm lake the next morning i stripped uh, got undressed dived into the lake and swam across to the other shore and back so uh he continued his practices unless he is completely satisfied that he he became a perfect uh, swimmer and this line line number uh, 16 on page number 29 is very important line it says i had conquered the fear of water then william douglas says there is terror only in the fear of death but actually experiencing death is peaceful and then uh, in the end president roosevelt concludes this uh, story with a remark he says all we have to fear is fear itself uh, why because uh, in the words of uh, uh, william douglas that experiencing death is peaceful death is peaceful only there is terror in the fear of death so indeed this chapter is really a powerful chapter and we must learn you know many things from this chapter how to stand firm against the odds of life and how to emerge as the victors uh, dear students remember it's not over until you win thank you